Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, I'm ripping into an old laptop so you can see how it works, see what's inside, maybe get some repair ideas or do what I'm going to do and find parts that you might want to repurpose for another project like this LCD screen that I'm taking out to make a secondary monitor from. I do recommend you go ahead and put some general precautions in place to protect yourself against shock, but also to make sure that you've got a nice clean work environment where you're grounded so that you can protect any parts that you want to take out in case you want to repurpose them. The first steps are all rather straightforward, but the one thing I always like to make sure of is that there is no possible power connected, so I make sure that it is disconnected from the power and that the battery has been removed. It's the first thing I like to do. This computer is old, so the hard drive that was in it did not hold much memory. However, in a previous video, I showed you how you could hook that up to a USB through a peripheral device, and you can refer to that if you want to, because I can actually use this drive as a little bit of extra storage if you see fit, or you can also take it apart and have more fun getting pieces out of it. But for now, I'm moving on to the LCD screen. I'm going to get all the covers over the screw holes taken out so I can start getting out all the screws that hold the plastic bezel over top of the LCD screen. In case you're curious about that green highlighter off to the side, it is actually no longer being used as a highlighter that's been cleaned out and repurposed. I showed you in a previous video how I turned that into a tool by making them into magnet pens. It's great for projects like this where you want to make sure you don't lose little parts like screws. To make them easier to find, any of the videos that I've mentioned today, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. It's kind of important to note that different models and makes of laptops have different ways of putting everything together. Especially in the newer models, you'll find that some of these screws are harder to discover. This laptop was actually pretty easy to find all of the connectors. In fact, even on the sides, there were some little tab spots that allowed you to push them in and it separated the cover. Underneath each of those tab holes was also access to another screw that needed to come out in order to get the LCD out. At this point, the screen will actually separate quite nicely, but there are a couple of important cables attached that you want to be careful to get out, and you want to do that without cutting them. First you want to do is unlock or untab the little latch that holds them securely into place, then remove the video cable as well as the inverter cable. You'll notice that I still haven't removed the screen yet, and that's because I have some more plastic that I'm going to have to remove in order to get to the end of the inverter cable and safely remove it as well. To protect the LCD screen, I'm covering the back with the lid and then flipping the whole computer over so that I can remove the rest of the screws from the bottom of the computer, which will allow me to get to the motherboard and the rest of the parts. We're going to treat the keyboard just like we did the LCD screen and unlock the connection clip and pull the cables out so that we can pull the keyboard free. I have yet to figure out what I'm going to do with it, but I now have a fully functioning keyboard that I can repurpose. But the better part for me is I can now finally disconnect that inverter cable. What we're left with now is a fully stripped down LCD panel, which is perfect. I'm going to use this for making a portable monitor for a future video. If for any reason you were trying to replace the LCD panel on your laptop, the back of it has a bunch of stickers that will direct you exactly to the LCD model number that you would need to order to replace it. On the back of the trackpad panel, there's actually an aluminum frame that holds a bunch of really cool little items that I do want to pull off of this to repurpose. Included is a rechargeable battery, a couple of momentary button switches, as well as the two PC speakers. Although the speakers aren't anything really robust, the nice thing about taking them off of here is each one has a nice little plug or clip that I could use for another purpose if I wanted to. And if I didn't want to reuse the speaker, all I have to do is open it back up and I could pull out a nice little neodymium magnet out of each one of them. I am being careful about how I remove the trackpad because someday when I have time, I may want to do a little bit of experimenting with the pinout to see if I could make this into a standalone device. 
One thing I do really like making use out of when it comes to computer parts are the heat sinks and fans. In fact, I've made several projects in the past with the fans I've taken out of computers. This inset picture shows a multi-purpose air filter and air freshener that I used a fan that looks just like the one that came out of this computer. It runs off 5 volts. And from yet another salvage project, I pulled a 12 volt fan and put it into an Altoids tin, which I was able to upscale the voltage coming out of USB to make that 12 volt fan run. That has turned out to be a wonderful cooling fan that I can carry with me wherever I go. I had mentioned that this was an old laptop, and it really honestly is. Once I opened it up, it really was clean on the inside. However, it didn't take long to realize how out of date a lot of these parts are. So, what my preference will be is to continue to break this down further into the usable parts that I can get out of here. There's some push button switches, lights, and other things that I can make some great project parts from. So if your goal is fixing up an old computer, maybe just repurposing some parts for some new DIY projects, or just tearing things apart to have some fun to see what's inside, an old laptop is perfect for you. A lot of the parts I see here I can use as they look right now, and several of them I'm going to actually end up taking apart a little bit further to get down deeper inside. If you have some fun ideas that I haven't mentioned here for any of these parts, I'd love to hear more about it in the comments below. As always, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to stop by Dialed In DIY and checking out my video. If you liked it, please let me know with a thumbs up. If you want to see more salvage projects like this, or maybe even some projects where I've used parts that came out of these salvage projects, you can check out my playlists and get some new ideas. Also, please feel free to subscribe and come back. There'll be plenty more dialed in DIY to come.